Montreal has a very long history. From the occupation of the indigenous people to the French and the British. The origin of the name is from the word Mons Realis that Jacques Cartier used to refer to the mountain hill in the middle of the village. In 1556, the Italian geographer Giovanni Battista Ramuzio translated to Monte Real on a map. Jacques Cartier became the first European to reach the area in October the 2nd, 1535. The city was called Oshlaga. It was then a village near the actual Mount Royal. It was occupied by St. Lawrence Iroquois, a very distinct group. However, they disappeared in 1580. The village of Vilmahi would be created in May the 17th, 1642 by the missionaries Paul Chamedé de Maisonneuve and Jeanne Mons. It was part of a project to create a colony dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The founders dreamed of a new Jerusalem where French and indigenous people would mix. In 1645, Jeanne Mons founded the Hôtel Dieu. It was one of the first hospitals in North America. In 1653, Marguerite Bourgeois would be the first teacher in Montreal and build the Congregation de Notre-Dame, which became mostly a teaching order. In 1663, the Sulpician Seminary became the new seigneur of the island. Fur trade with the natives was the main activity and played a huge part in the economy of Villemarie. In 1701, a peace treaty was signed after the French and Iroquois War. With the Great Peace, Montreal and the surrounding seigneury could develop without the fear of Iroquois attacks. Fire ravages in the city gave a place to a new regulation, forcing stone construction while the wood was still allowed in the suburbs. Ville-Marie became the center for fur trade and an important city in New France. In 1760, New France became a British colony. As a British colony, the city began to grow from the British immigration. English-speaking loyalists left the American colony during the American Revolution. During the 19th century, more and more English-speaking merchants and residents continued to arrive. The language chosen for business in the city will be English. Northwest Company contributed to the success of fur trade in the city. The population was mostly French until the 1830s. In 1832, Montreal was officially recognized as a city. The city's growth was due to the opening of the Lachine Canal at the beginning of the 19th century. The canal allowed ships to pass by the unnavigable Lachian Rapids in the southern part of the island. The canal led to a rapid industrialization during the mid-19th century. The economy attracted French-Canadian laborers from the surrounding countryside to factories. They were mostly living in Saint-Henri and Maisonneuve. Irish immigrants settled in tough working class neighborhoods such as Pointe Saint Charles and Griffintown. The growing city also attracted immigrants from Italy and Eastern Europe. For many years to come, the city would be divided in two, and Saint Laurent Street would be the line to cross. The western part of the city was inhabited by Anglophones. They were mostly part of the higher and middle class. They were often owner of banks, factories, or engineers, while the eastern part of the city was inhabited by francophones and were mostly part of the middle or lower class. The main jobs were shopkeepers, factory workers, or owners of print shops. These jobs were really similar to the ones given to new immigrants. The Saint Laurent Street was mainly occupied by immigrants. Montreal was the capital of the United Province of Canada and the cultural center in the mid-19th century, leading to even more immigration from British islands or colonies. Scottish immigrants did a lot for the city by establishing and founding numerous Montreal institutions. McGill University by a Scottish merchant in 1813, but granted with the Royal Charter by King George IV in 1821. The Bank of Montreal by John Richardson in 1817. The High School of Montreal founded 
in 1843 by James Ferrier, a Scottish-Canadian politician. In 1845, Morgan Store, established by Henry Morgan. Redpath Sugar in 1854 by John Redpath and the Royal Victoria Hospital, established in 1893 through donations by Scottish immigrants, by two cousins, Donald Smith, First Lord Strathcona, and George Stephen, First Lord Mount Stephen. In 1959, many industries started to move to the southern part of Ontario and the Midwest due to the introduction of the St. Lawrence Seaway. These movings affected the importance of Montreal as a transshipment center for goods. In the 1960s, the Quiet Revolution will emerge and change the city. More Francophones began to own businesses when it was a field mostly occupied by Anglophones. Four of the ten tallest buildings of the city will be completed. Tour de la Bourse, Place Ville-Marie, the CIBC building, and the CIL House. In 1966, the Montreal Metro will be built. In 1967, the city welcomed the Exposition 67, and in 1976, the Summer Olympic Games. Due to the Quebec independence movement, many Anglophones left the city. Many headquarters and even companies moved to Toronto, contributing to the growth of the city, but also the decline of the economy of Montreal. Today, the economy of the city is diverse, and the City of Saints is one of the most important in North America. Indeed, Montreal is the third largest financial center in North America and the 12th in the world. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos, and thanks for watching.